Now, we're going to be going over the top 10 worst cards of the set. There'll probably be another top 10 video of the top 10 best cards. But for now, we're doing the top 10 worst cards that I don't think are really going to get played much. They haven't, uh, they already haven't seen much play, right? And uh, just overall cards that I think might actually even need a buff come the next patch. So with that said, let me know in the comments below if you guys have any uh, input as to these 10 cards, if you agree, if you disagree. So we have been doing a ton of decks lately. Uh, I think like the last... I don't know, seven, eight, nine straight videos have been new decks from the Rising Tide set. If you think I'm missing a card, let me know in the comments below. And if you think I am 100% completely wrong about a card and you have some sick deck idea that breaks the card, obviously I got to know. So put that in the comments below as well. So if you are looking for the top 10 worst cards in the Rising Tide set and are trying to make sure you are not playing with these cards, you are in 100% the right place. Let's get this puppy started. All right, so we have 10. We have 10 cards we're gonna go through. We're gonna start with number 10. We're gonna work our way down to number one. And I'm gonna throw it out there right now. If you are thinking, Plunder Poro and Sub Percival might be on this list. Well, I guess you're going to find out, huh? I personally love myself some Cataclysm. So let's see if uh, those two ended up actually making the list. Starting off, we have number 10 with Mystifying Magician. And honestly, all right, this card on the surface, when I first saw it, it seems okay, right? You're randomly transforming something into a five cost. Uh, follower seems pretty good, but my problem with this card is that it costs four mana. All right, so we have all right. So here's the deal: you pay four mana. Ideally, you want to be targeting a follower that is a one cost one one, or maybe even like a token, like a spiderling. All right. Now let's assume the value of a one one token is one mana. Right? Maybe you even get that token for free. So let's go with the benefit of the doubt here and say it was a zero mana one one. All right. Now you're adding. Theoretically, if you get a good one drop like a Calvary or a Radiant Guardian or something like that, um, you're adding plus four, plus four stats to it, um, which is valued at, you know, maybe four or five mana. Let's go with four mana and possibly an effect which could be valued at one mana. So now you're looking at seven mana. The card itself has two, two worth of stats and you're getting five, five on the, uh, on the flip side. So five mana, seven, seven worth of stats. Plus, you have to actually have the right kind of combo on the field with a low-level token plus this card, and your deck has to revolve around it. You're really just getting a slight buff in stats, and it's also reliant on RNG. Nah, I don't think this card is... I mean, it could be in the future. I think if this was like a 3-cost 1-2 or something like that, I think being able to get it off on turn 3, similar to something like Tall Tales, would be very balanced. I think it would be a much better card being able to get that tempo out faster. But until they do something like that... I do not think this card is good, which is why it's number 10. Number nine, we have Bark Beast. And all right, this one's really simple, okay? We have Jagged Butcher, which is a one cost two, two, give me plus one, plus one if you have the plunder effect off. Uh, Bark Beast is the first time something dies, it gets plus two, plus two. It starts as a one, one. I don't know why they would have this start as a one, one. They should just make it start as a two, two and get plus one, plus one when something dies. It's... Same sort of effect as Jagged Butcher. I don't know why there's more downside to playing the card. Um, it's just like, it's more downside, more risk, but also more reward technically, but not really. It's pretty much the same reward because you could just play something like Jagged Butcher, which is achieving that effect with far less risk. So I don't think this card is good. I think they need to change it to a 2-2, two -two, gain plus one, plus one, just like Jagged Butcher. So it's in line with everything else. All right, hold up. Let's like back up. I know we're a couple cards into this, but... Again, do not forget to subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. Appreciate all the support. And if you're liking the video, if you like most of my videos, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the like button. All right, so number eight is Double Up. And this one is disappointing. When I saw it, it looked like a cool idea. But then when you really dig down deep, it's a bad card. A six cost fast spell to essentially deal two damage to a unit. Okay, so right there. That's like two damage for a mystic shot. All right, so now you're paying four cost to deal four damage to the Nexus. 
if you get the condition off of killing the unit that you target with with it, which probably won't happen to be honest with you because it only deals two damage. We're a very heavy three health meta right now. Um, so that's going to be difficult in the first place. Plus somebody could save it with a Twin Disciples. So now it feels even worse getting this card denied, so to speak, with something like a Twin Disciples. Because now you don't just not kill the unit. You also don't do the four damage. I'd rather just play a five cost slow decimate and get the same effect with less you know, potential downside to it basically getting entirely negated. So I don't think this card is good. I think there needs to be a change. Something like three damage to the unit, three damage to the Nexus for the same cost might be good, or maybe keep it as is, but reduce its cost to five. Number seven is Crack Shot Corsair. And I actually play tested this card a lot with Misfortune. When I first tried this whole scout thing, I was like, oh man, scouts plus Misfortune plus Crack Shot Corsair. You can just play a lot of low cost units and really just you know, do so much damage to their nexus between crack shot and misfortune every single turn you level up misfortune now you're doing a ton of damage seem like a good strategy yeah no uh misfortune's good because she has three health and again like i mentioned we're in a very you know three health strong meta and this having one health is a super bad downside because it doesn't really do anything unless you're on the offensive so if you are playing literally against any kind of deck with any removal. This thing dies. It dies to a Withering Whale. It dies to a Vile Feast. It dies to like everything that is anti-aggro. So now you're just getting doubly punished for playing aggro with this in the deck. So um, I do think maybe this could get increased to two health. Might be a little strong at two health, but I do think something needs to change about this card before it gets better. All right, City Breaker. I really wanted a card like this or this card to be good when it came out. It doesn't look like it's seeing much play, and I can see why. The At the cost that it's currently at, it comes out a little bit late. I'd like to see this at something like a 3 cost, 0, 4. Even though you're sacrificing a health, you're getting it all. Uh, you're getting it out on a much earlier turn, which I think is more important. Um, again, we just talked about the Mystifying Magician maybe coming out on turn 3. That difference in coming out on turn 3 is huge. Um, I don't know. And then you also obviously get another trigger of its effect off on that turn. So I think overall this card has potential, but it needs, I don't know. I think it coming down earlier would definitely be good. The only thing I could see this being played uh, in in the future would be possibly a slow burn type deck, which I have seen people playing like a Swain slow burn type thing where it's like aggro, but it's slow. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But <laughs> anyways, this card right now, not good. All right, Golden Narwhal confuses me. I don't really know why they made the token for the, the other larger thing. It's like a five cost seven, seven, I think that summons this. Um, I don't know why they made the token, Golden Narwhal, a card in and of itself as a common. So we essentially have a three cost, two, four elusive with vulnerable. Now let's take a step back here. We already have a three cost, two, two elusive that draws you a card. So now you're valuing that drawing one card as two health and having vulnerable. I mean, so the two health kind of gets counteracted by the vulnerable. So now you just have drawing a card. So obviously you'd rather have the free card than having the extra two health just for having your elusive unit have vulnerable, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of elusive, right? It just kind of counteracts the elusive. Sure, it can't be blocked, but it's still, I don't know. I, I just think that this card might actually be okay at two. If it's a little strong at two, maybe make it a two, three with elusive and vulnerable. I mean, the four health is definitely a problem, but with it being vulnerable, I just really, it's just not good. I think it needs some sort of change to make this card a good downside for the card that summons it, but also not so much of a downside where the card itself is just complete crap. Number four, I love seeing this card. I think the, the art on it is awesome. Uh, I think the idea of it is cool. But it's bad. Mind meld. I don't know. This kind of reminds me of Pack Overwhelming. I think that's, I, I always say that name wrong. Um, in the first set, because anything that's like super big like that, like slow, like for Demacia, Overwhelming Pack, um, you know, this card, it's just, it's just too slow. I mean, Ruination is good because your opponent is forced to play around it basically the entire game. Your opponent isn't really as forced to play around something like a, a Ford Demacia, etc., because their board state is inherently will will likely deal with most of the problem that comes up from that. And once you play that card, you've pretty much exhausted 
most of your your spell mana for that turn, right? Even if you have 13, you play this card, you only have five spell mana left after that. So there's only so many cards you can play with what's left over. If your opponent also has 13 mana, on, they'll probably have a response to just take care of everything that just happened. Now, this can make a very, very, very big board. Uh, but I still think this is more of like a meme deck type card. So maybe we'll see it in the future. Uh, maybe some sort of, again, token deck, which tokens did not really get much support in this set. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. All right, listen, no amount of standalone slash undying or unyielding spirit is going to convince me that Bubble Bear is good. I want, I, I, I mean, I thought it was funny when I saw the card. I was like, oh, this is cute. This will be like a control option so that it can just chump block like three attacks early in the game. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, so no, no, no. If you're just playing a card strictly to chump block, yeah, no, I don't I don't think that's really that good. I mean, it's elusive, sure. I mean, yeah, you could buff it, sure. That just seems like too much for such a bad card to really build your deck around. So let's just, let's just move on. No, no bubble bear. All right, so we're down to the last two. So will the last two be Plunder Pearl and Subhersible? Well, I'll tell you right now, number two is Caught in the Cold. So... That means one of them was not number one or number two. Uh-oh. Why is that? You'll find out in a second. So anyways, Caught in the Cold, another really weird card to me. Like it was, I don't know, man. Like I feel like Rhyme Fang Wolf existing as a card makes this card not need to exist. I mean, I guess it, I, I mean, I guess if there's eventually some sort of spell only Freljord deck, you know this would be needed to meet that requirement but i just feel like if you're playing rhyme fang wolf which most frostbite decks are going to be playing rhyme fang wolf if that's like your your strategy or win condition this card basically does what rhyme fang wolf does like i'd rather have harsh winds here because now you frostbite the one you're challenging with harsh uh, uh rhyme fang wolf and then you're also getting to frostbite another one for free so, and it's at burst speed, not slow speed. This is at slow speed, which seems really bad. If this was like, you know, uh, ye be warned where it also marks the unit and if they die, you draw a card, that might be better. You could even make it like a three cost slow spell and then that might actually be worth it. But as it currently stands, uh, I think Rhyme Fang Wolf being a thing makes this not a thing. All right, number one, number one. And I wonder if you, I, I wonder if everybody watching this would be surprised to find out that neither sub or Plunder Poro made this list. And I'm going to tell you why right after we go over number one. So number one is Shell Shocker. Shell Shocker. Literally filler. Literally filler. Listen, I, again, so what I will say is these, the 10 cards on this list do have potential if certain either changes get made or other cards come out. Shell Shocker is a perfect example where Shell Shocker probably, even though it's number one and is the, in my opinion, worst card in the set right now, I think that it has the most potential on this list. And what I mean by that is if some sort of true token deck type support comes out, I think this would be amazing because it essentially allows you to play a unit for free on turn one and still start banking spell mana for some sort of buff on the following turns. Uh, but we don't have any like two cost field buff right now. Like like give your field plus one plus one or something like that. Those cards don't exist yet. When they do, which I'm sure they will at some point, this card will rise in playability and I think it will be uh, pretty good. But for now, it's useless. Nobody's going to be playing this card. <laughs> so now, why do I think Sub Percival and Plunder Poro should not be on this list? Well, first off, Plunder Poro is significantly better than the other poros right it has two keywords not just one um so that's that right but all right sub percival first off let's start with that sub percival actually is not a bad card on its own because there are many decks that will just be able to trigger it regardless of if it's the strategy or not and then if that's the case it's a five five elusive draw card for five uh yeah that's 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 pretty good that's it's like a little good right it's like a really better shadow assassin so why do I say both of these cards are not on this list? Now, let's say Sub Percival was like some other ridiculous thing like Cataclysm. It's exactly why Cataclysm was not on my first top 10 worst cards list. 
These cards represent fun, different strategies that make people think, that make people want to make different new deck ideas. And for that reason, they are great cards. I think that any card in any card game that allows the potential for some crazy cool deck idea to be had, I think that that has a place in a card game. I think that they are needed in a card game. And I think that without cards like that in a card game, the card game becomes substantially worse. So for that reason, I think that Plunder Poro is great. I think that Subpersible is great. I think that Cataclysm is great, especially because you can summon it with Jailbreak. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I think that these cards are needed. Um, so yeah, that's that's my 10 worst cards right now. So let me know if you guys agree. Comment below. As always, until next time, everybody stay healthy, stay positive. I hope it just works for you. Peace out.